Hi and welcome to the second video in the series of RF circuit design using Quicks. Uh, in the first video, we saw the basic uh, UI of Quicks and where to find a lot of options like what are the various components available, the, the data display formats, and some kind of basic transmission line models that are available. Uh, now let's go a step ahead and we will be setting up as parameter simulation in this tutorial for an ideal transmission line. So the first step is to create a new project. So I'll create a new project. I'll name it as S para of uh, transmission line and this is my project too. So I'll save it and then next step is to save the schematic. So let's save this untitled schematic by the same name. Uh, you can name it anything that you want. It doesn't matter. I am just naming it like this for my own reference. And now we have the schematic here in the project. Uh, here we are going to set up an S parameter simulation for a ideal transmission line. So let's go and first select the ideal transmission line. Uh, this is the ideal model of the transmission line. Uh, the name of this line is line one, and you see there are a couple of things here: Z and L. Uh, in case uh, you don't know what Z and L is, you always can double click on it and you can check what all options we have in the transmission line. So it is an ideal transmission line. The name of the line is line 1. You can change it to anything that you wish in case you need to call it somewhere else in the circuit. Uh, and uh, there are a couple of things, a couple of parameters or properties associated with this uh, ideal transmission line. First is Z which is also visible here. And uh, Z stands for the characteristic impedance. Here the characteristic impedance is 50 ohm. L stands for the length or the electrical length of the line. And alpha is the attenuation factor basically, the attenuation constant of this line. And since it's an ideal uh, line, I'll uh, assume it to be lossless. So I'll keep all the things as it is. I'll keep Z as 50 ohms. Uh, I'll change the length. Uh, there's a reason to it because uh, 1 mm is very small. It's not even comparable to the wavelength in which we will be doing our parameter simulation. So I'll make it a little bit larger, maybe like 20 mm and you have to click apply whenever you change anything you click apply and you click OK it changes. There's one more way to change the variables when uh, after using uh, these uh, models available here for many times you will understand that OK Z is characteristic impedance you don't have to go into this and change it from here you can simply double click here and you can uh, edit the value here, press enter, it will save the new value. Let's go back and change it to 50. So currently I have uh, just changed the length to a little bit longer because 1 mm is very short for the wavelength in which we will be doing our uh, S parameter simulation. Next step is uh, to set up the power sources for S parameter simulation. As I said in my first video, whenever we are going to do S parameter simulation, it talks about the reflected and incident uh, like the power. So we need power sources to run the S parameter simulation and this is nothing, it's an ideal transmission line section where I'll be connecting to power sources. So the way we connect them is by using the wire which is available here. You click on it and you have this cursor now which is a wire. Uh, in order to connect, you connect, uh, you move the cursor on this red dot, you click on it and you just drag it. Uh, you don't have to uh, continuously press the click. Click it once and you will get the wire and then you move it. You click it again so that you get a you change you can change the angle and then you click it again on this point and now you see it's connected and we don't have any wire anymore. Uh, another method is uh, of connecting is by uh, you can click escape to come out of the wire. Another method of connecting is by dragging the component on this red and aligning these uh, both red circles. So if I uh, drag this and I will just drop it over this and you see it's connected. I, if I pull it back we already have the wire connection done. Uh, one more thing which is missing is the grounds because we always need reference in the simulation. So ground option is here. I just selected and placed it. Press escape to come out of the option. And now we have our system set up. So these P1 and P2 are the uh, power uh, sources with uh, the impedance as uh, 50 ohm. You can imagine that this transmission line is connected to a two port VNA. Uh, both of the ports of the VNA are at 50 ohm, something like that. Let's go and check what options we have in uh, this power source. Uh, let's study that as well. So if I double click on it, uh, the name of the power source is P1. The number is 1 and we have a couple of options such as Z, P and F. So Z is again stands for the port impedance which is in most cases 50 because uh, whenever you are going to run the simulations, we follow the 50 ohm standard in the RF. 
and uh, this power stands for the power of this power since it's a power source you can change the power currently it's at 0 dBm and for s parameter simulation this doesn't matter but this is useful when you are doing maybe uh, some LNA or PA kind of simulations or mixers where you want to uh, for example in PA you want to plot P out versus P in or maybe you want to find the P1 dB then you can change this power which you are feeding to the input of the amplifier and then we also have the frequency uh, uh, of the source. Uh, this is uh, useful when you are doing some mixer uh, simulations. Uh, so okay, uh, th these are the parameters and now let's go and check how to set up the S parameter simulation for this. So you go to the, uh, we go to the simulations window here and we have a couple of simulations here. We select the S parameter simulation and you just place it and press escape to come out of it. And you see we have a couple of things here. As parameter simulation, we can always double click it and understand what options we have. We have the sweep parameter which is frequency. Uh, you cannot change this. This is uh, because we want to sweep the frequency because this parameter is nothing but the S parameter placed uh, uh, plotted with respect to the frequency. And the type, type of sweep, uh, basically uh, you see we have start and stop uh, limits defined here for the frequency and how you want to jump between these, like how you want to, uh, what, what should be the step, it, sh it should be in the linear fashion. So I just keep it linear. Uh, the start and stop is currently at 1 and 10 gigahertz, so I'll make it 6 gigahertz. And you see as soon as I changed it, uh, the number of steps were previously 19, so it automatically changed the step size to accommodate 19 points in between 1 and 6 gigahertz. But uh, uh, you can change any of uh, these two. I want it to be 50 megahertz and you see it automatically changed to 101 points or if you change 51, uh, uh, it all automatically changes the step size. So you can change any one of them. So I'll go ahead with 101 points, which stands for 50 megahertz steps in between 1 gigahertz to 6 gigahertz. I'll click apply. Okay, so you see we change the options. Similarly, you can also change the options just by clicking here and editing the value and pressing enter. It will save the value in this. So now we have uh, set up the S parameter uh, template here for this parameter simulation of this ideal transmission line and what uh, we can see is that the impedance of this transmission line is 50 ohm and both the ports are at 50 ohm which means that it's a matched system. Uh, one more thing to note here is that it's an ideal transmission line so we don't have control over the width or the other parameters or substrate because it's just the ideal transmission line model. It is not a microstrip line or a coplanar uh, waveguide. Uh, Another important thing here is that you see the number of the port num1 and num2. This stands for uh, this uh, notation it follows uh, when I will run the S parameter simulation you will see four parameters because it's we have two sources so it will it's like a two port uh, network here this transmission line and we will have four parameters S11, S12, S21 and S22 and uh, S11 will correspond to the side where I have port P1 with number 1. If I interchange this, if I take port 2 that side, port 1 this side, then S22 will correspond to this side. And the normal convention that we follow in circuits is like left side is my input and right side is my output. So it's better to keep it this way. Ports numbered towards the left is 1 and port uh, towards the right is number 2. So that this will be my S11 and this side uh, parameters will be uh, corresponding to S22. Uh, that's it. So we'll run the simulation now. You can run the simulation by clicking this gear icon or you can go to simulate and click on simulate. So let's run the simulation and uh, the simulation ran without an error. If there was an error, the pop-up window which appeared for a brief time, it would have been there uh, with the error message. Uh, now you see as soon as simulation ran, we op the quicks opened some file uh, with .dpl extension. Now this is the data display uh, window of quicks. And you have a couple of templates which I discussed in the first video. So we need to select the template. So for this case, uh, since we want to plot as parameter versus frequency, we will select the Cartesian template. And you see as soon as I place the Cartesian template on the window, I have uh, some uh, uh, pop-up here which uh, has the S parameters computed. So we have a couple of variables. First is frequency which is an independent variable. Of course, because it's going to be on, going to be my x-axis, and x-axis is an independent variable which is frequency, and the number of size is 101, which is 101 points, which we defined uh, in this parameter simulator. And then we have S11, S12, S21, S22, which are of dependable type, and it depends on the the size depends on the number of frequency. That means S11 is calculated at 101 points between 1 to 6 gigahertz. Uh, and uh, next is uh, 
let's plot it so the way to plot it is we double click on the uh, variable that you want to plot so for example if i want to plot s1 i double clicked on it and it, it moved to my graph and uh, click apply okay and now you see it appeared here press escape again to come out of it and now you see it appeared uh, here on the on my uh, cartesian window so we have s11 values versus frequency and frequencies from 1 to 6 because those are the limits that we put in the s parameter simulation uh, block and we have s11 as 0 but uh, how come uh, it's 0 because it's a match system so we are expecting s11 to be as low as possible maybe somewhere like minus 90 minus 100 db it is because currently uh, the values which are stored in here are in a linear uh, format they are not in db scale so we need to convert them in db scale otherwise zero is also correct zero is basically the, which means that there is no power being reflected back and that's correct because both sides for both ports this is a 50 ohm so there is no reflection of power back to the port so s11 is zero but this is in linear but we um, we are habitual or we are used to plotting uh, s11 in db scale versus frequency so let's see how to do that uh, in order to change uh, the parameters all these parameters into db we need to use the rf equa uh, the equation block which is available here you can simply click on it and place it here press escape and now you see by default we have equation with equation 1 and y is equals to 1 double click on it and you see currently it's y is equals to 1 uh, you can name this variable anything it will store it in that variable uh, the calculation so you can manipulate the variables here you can do uh, you can do some mathematical operations on the variables which are calculated in this uh, simulation uh, I'll name it as dbs11 because that is more uh, understandable so it means that s11 value in db and equal to is already there so you don't need to put equal to here it, the equation already puts equal to and uh, what is dbs11 equal to it's the linear uh, s11 into db so uh, quick supports a lot of mathematical functions uh, so it already has an inbuilt uh, function uh, with the name db which converts the linear value into db scale so i'll going i'll use that directly and the way to use it like db and round brackets and then put the variable that you want to change into db so i want to change s11 into db and the way uh, quicks represents s11 is that s square bracket 1 comma 1 so there are square brackets here uh, you need to be careful about it and just click on apply okay so now we have db s11 variable which stores uh, s11 values in uh, db scale uh, I need to rerun the simulation because this change what I have done here is not been computed. Uh, the calculation has not been done. So I'll rerun the simulation. And uh, if I go back now, I double click on this thing. We can see that we have one more parameter available here for my plot, which is dbs11. So let's go ahead and double click on it. So it moved to my graph. Uh, dbs11 and I don't want this D, uh, linear value because both of them will be like uh, far apart from each other because one is in linear zero and one is in db scale so I'll delete the previous one I'll leave it click on apply okay and you see as soon as I clicked on apply this uh, line which was at zero now moved to somewhere close to minus one but uh, should it be minus one or is it minus one so let's check uh, we can change the limits of this graph to better visualize it double click on it and go to limits so we have x axis limits which is my frequency and then we have left and right axis because we have two y axis here you can have two multiple variables on the same graph so i'll change it for uh, left axis and i'll start at as low as possible because i know it's a match system so my s11 is going to be as low as possible and i'll stop at maybe zero uh, in steps of 10 db click on apply and okay so as soon as I clicked apply, you see the red line is still at minus 100, which is expected because ideally it will be at minus infinity because the entire system is matched. So what we can do, we can play around with it a little bit. Currently it's matched. We can uh, disturb the matching. We can uh, increase the impedance of this to 70, something like 70 ohms. Double click on it, edit it and click on enter, uh, press enter. It will automatically change. So now it's uh, set to 70 ohms and let me rerun the simulation. You see as soon as I rerun the simulation, it's not matched anymore. The dbs11 is, uh, it was as low as possible, but now it's close to minus 10 uh, db for certain band. 
which means that the matching is not proper and you can also check this on the smith chart because it's easier to check the matching on the smith chart db uh, the s11 value will just give the return loss but it doesn't talk about matching uh, so it's always better to look at the smith chart you can select the smith chart template from here and we can place it here and what we want to put on the smith chart so you cannot plot db values on a, a smith chart it has to be a linear value and obviously you can only plot s11 or 22 on the smith chart you cannot plot 2112 on smith chart so double click on it click on apply okay and we already have a nice looking curve on the smith chart and if we see it's not at 50 because we know this is the match point which means that this transmission line is not not matched for any of the frequencies uh, if you want to read out the values on any of the graphs uh, you have the marker option which is available here you can select this marker and you can just simply drop it anywhere that you want you can have multiple markers and you can even move the markers so i'll just place random markers at random places and in order to move the marker just uh, select it once by clicking on it and then you can use your right and left arrow keys to move the markers at different uh, frequency points where the computation was done and you see uh, for example the dbs11 at 2 gigahertz is minus 12.1 db at uh, 3.8 gigahertz is 9.78 and similarly for the smith chart for the marker you get the frequency and you get the s11 and z11 values so you see the impedance if i move it it's never around 50 it's it's it always is around like a, a, a higher value than 50 and uh, it uh, also has some reactive part so it's definitely not matched uh, let's go back and change it to 50 just for the smith chart thing uh, you can check the we can check it on the smith chart uh, let's make it 50 read in the simulation and we see now the point is at exactly at 50 s11 is 0 and let's let me change doesn't matter even if i change it for any 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 frequency it's always at 50 because this system is this transmission line is always in the matched condition so that's it for this video uh, oh and you see the s11 is minus infinity as i said because now it's 50 and it's perfectly matched so that's it for this video in this video we saw how to set up a uh, basic as parameter simulation in quicks and we used uh, ideal transmission line model to do to uh, show uh, this parameter simulation and we also saw how to use the data display templates and how to convert uh, uh, the variables into db scale how to check uh, the smith chart and uh, that's it for this video see you in the next video